So I'd like to introduce one of our esteemed partners from AWS, Sukriti Gupta. Could you please come on stage? Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, grab a seat. Can you please tell us about your initiative. Absolutely. By the way, guys, I'm really impressed, and thank you, Chappie, for setting up this stage so prominently. I think the Gen AI and the disruption or the innovation is going to bring to us is definitely the top of mind of everyone. So thank you. It's a great community. I'm so glad to be part of this event today. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. So quickly introduce myself. My name is Sukirti. I am part of the AWS Gen AI ML BD team. What we help a startup is uh, either with the technology stack, with the go-to-market, connecting with the enterprises, the credits, you name it. We just want you to be successful with your journey. I do want to call it out one thing, just like uh, this uh, forum is going through rebranding. You, you might have seen that it used to be called AWS Gen AI Loft, and we are also uh, rebranded it as a AWS Builder Loft. And part of the reason is in AWS, we believe, is the builders, is the startups, people who roll their sleeves. They are the ones who are going to drive the innovation. So. Thank you. So I'm just, I appreciate that. How many people here have used AWS as a product or service? I just want to give him some data here. OK, that's impressive. That's impressive. I mean, you are definitely serving our community. Along those lines, though, what is a current program or service or offering that we all should take more notice of that is publicly available that we might be not noticing because there's just so much great opportunities out there? No, absolutely. And um, I'm assuming as you were talking about the startup opportunities to engage with. So I would highly encourage just look for the startups.aws.com is the AWS startup page. We do have a couple of startup programs like Activate Credits as an example, where you can sign up, you can get started with the AWS. We also do, over the time, a lot of good accelerators and incubators. Like Most likely in coming times, we are going to uh, announce a Gen AI accelerator program. And there, the credits could be pretty decent, like a couple of hundred thousands to half a million. And what these programs do is not only you get the credits, we try to match you with the enterprises. We invite our uh, VC partners. And we have a very kind of a close-knit ecosystem with a lot of VCs, a lot of accelerators, partners like NVIDIA. So we are happy to make those kind of introductions. So just keep an eye for all the upcoming programs. Oh. You know, one thing that Chappie had talked about is that AI is growing at an accelerated pace. And along those lines, there's probably some regulations or certain policies or there's certain bigger picture thinking that organizations like AWS are doing. For all the startups and founders and early stage builders out here, what are some things they should think about over the next 12 to 24 months? You know, that's, that's a very interesting question because the way the pace of innovation is, and throughout the day, I had so many customer calls. I was part of the AI engineering world fair. And one of the customer told me that they have this rule that if anything is not uh, supported right now, just hold on for two weeks, somebody else is going to come up with a solution. So I thought that was interesting because the pace of innovation is uh, pretty fast. It's literally growing exponentially. So it's very hard to predict what the future is going to look like in 12 to 18 months, which looks like a, almost a decade in this innovation. One thing I could call it out that as you are developing uh, your applications and you know the latest thing is the multi-agent orchestration and you know the flows, if you go back to the principles like the principles of microservices, the modern application, right? What you have to realize that underlying infrastructure, whether it's a serverless, it's the containers, it's Kubernetes, those things could evolve over the time. However, when you are designing your applications, just keep the things as fluid, as kind of isolated, following the best practices of the old event-driven architecture. That gives you the flexibility as the new uh, LLMs comes on board, the new plumbings, the new versions of MCPs come on board you have the flexibility to keep upgrading and keep using those models. And your architecture is kind of a little bit more flexible to adopt to the growing changes. But 
All I can say, all the LLMs, all the capabilities, all the protocols, they are going to look much better than what we have right now. And I think my final question is, let's paint a case study. There are companies here who would dream of getting a big client. And you work with a lot of clients and partners. Um, some of the other names that Chap even mentioned in his presentation. How would you and your in the team you work with guide these startups? Like, is there a blueprint to help them get ready so that they can get a deal with, you know, Anthropic or these other larger names, or even within the AWS ecosystem? Because you mentioned that you have this accelerator. You know, getting in not just as a partner, but as like as a paying client or someone that can generate income or revenue for that organization? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. And that's tr kind of the question we try to answer every day for our customers. I would say, uh, just figure it out which vertical or which customer segment you are trying to address your solution for. Because uh, depending upon what your target uh, market looks like, your solution and your positioning could look very different, right? Like a lot of uh, startups tra are trying to pitch agentic frameworks to enterprises, right? Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 companies. And if that is the case, you have to understand a, for the typical large scale enterprise, how their security postures look like, what are their CISO compliance looks like, and you have to follow that. On the other hand, if you're going to SMBs, which might not have that big of a security requirements, what are the burning pain points they got, right? And like, for example, there is a data point that 70% of SMBs don't pick up the phones from their customers. Part of the reason could be it's out of their working hours. And part of the reason is they are doing the real work instead of answering the phone. So that's where you see a lot of focus going to the voice agents as an example, right? In last year, uh, Y Combinator cohort, north of 20% companies were focusing on the voice agents. Now, if you're focusing on voice agents, figure it out what are the key matrices, right? Like the latency becomes a paramount. Then who are your end customer? Because the same voice solution would look very different for a restaurant versus a healthcare provider. For one of them, if you make some mistakes, it might be more or less susceptible if the menu is slightly off. But if you are going to sell the same voice uh, solution to a healthcare provider, you have to understand the HIPAA compliance, you have to understand the PII, you have to understand everything else, which becomes a table stake. So for me, uh, based on where you want to focus on, try to understand their pain points, go and talk to those customers at least a couple of times and figure it out uh, where their burning desires are, what are the table stakes, and then pitch your product accordingly. Well, before we uh, adjourn, I just want to personally thank you on behalf of AI Collective. We have hosted you know, for the last almost two years, events and demo nights are clearly our, in the SF, our most popular event. And you have been the home for many of those. So I just want to thank you for that. And let's please give it up to Sirkiti Gupta and the AWS team. They're doing great work. Thank you. And also, uh, please scan that credit. Um, you can get $25 in AWS credits just by scanning that survey. <laughs>